been with us in the mastermind program the last couple of years, and you did Soul Speaks in this year, and you did an equine vision journey too, which um, you've done all kinds of fun things this year. Um, so welcome, Sherry. Sherry Hess. Thank you. Tell us Thank who you. you are. I'm Sherry Hess. Yeah, you just told us who I am. And I didn't, I didn't ask Kristen <laughs> to say her business, but so I will. We'll come back to that in a second. Tell us your business okay. so that people know what your business is. That was rude of me. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Kristen. It all came out though, yeah. right? Um, my business is called the Flavor Remedy, and um, I finally figured out my sound bite: <laughs> uh, saving the earth one flavor at a time. Yay! And. Um, it has been a journey. It has been a long journey to actually create this movement. It's a movement. It's not, it's not coaching. It's not a product that I'm offering. It's, it's a movement that I'm starting and it's scary as hell <laughs> Yeah, because you're, you're changing the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's not anyone out there having this conversation. Right. So what, tell people what that movement is, because I think that's an important part yep, of the story. It is. So the movement is, um, it's all about embodiment. It's, it's the same thing, right? It's the same way of getting a message of, across. And, but my little niche and my focus on embodiment. Can around, I time you out? Yeah. It's not a little niche. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big, but no one's talking it's a about it. It's a gigantic <laughs> opportunity. So I'm just going to call you on that. It's little because no one's talking about it. Good. Okay. Got you. So my niche is, is to elevate uh, the reverence of the sense of taste. Yeah. Um, and doing that through what I call living flavor. So we've really never been taught how to trust our taste buds. We've really never been even explained to us that our sense of taste is there for the whole benefit or for the whole purpose of experiencing nutrition. And it's one of our most manipulated senses. It's a, it's something that we're born with and yet we don't know how to use it as a tool to feed our own bodies, to fuel our own bodies and to experience pleasure in life. And, um, the way that it, it, it sounds far-fetched, if you just think about it, well, I really, I'm supposed to eat everything that tastes good. Cause that's kind of what I'm saying. But the caveat is that you need to do it with food that is grown, raised from the earth the way it is meant to be. And when you have flavor grown like that, you have the nutrition behind it. Yeah. And, it's, so. it's, and the, the five flavors are? Salty. I, 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 this should be my quiz, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, so there are categories of flavor that is the basis of my education and to help us learn like what these are. So the, the categories of flavor are salty, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. Yeah. Yeah. And what I love about this is that Sherry took all of her her stories from the past, right? The stories of, oh, of, stories. of tuning back into, you know, she was a, she was a trained chef. She had, um, she had this passion for being in gardens and having, having her hands in there. She'd ran a, a, a company that was a spice company and she knew there was more than just the spice company. There was something more that she was supposed to do. So talk to us a little bit about that. That was when I met you. Yeah. Um, actually, I met you right after Ignite two years ago. Um, and that was what I was trying to figure out, how to get out of the spices and into this bigger message that I wasn't even sure what it was. I had this idea. Um, and... You know, I think, I think I always knew there was something big there but it's taken me two, it's really taken me two years to really yeah. get to make this leap of a connection between our sense of taste and basically saving the world. Yeah. And, and that, <laughs> that was, there was some courage associated. Yeah. With that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and yeah. So soul speaks from the stage was absolutely, I mean, I could have said everything that Kristen said, you know, the turning point of being able to stand in front of people, look them in the eye and just tell your story. I remember like, so we did it in two different phases, right? We did it the first time it wasn't recorded and I was up here and I was sassy and I was funny, right? Like it was so easy. It was so easy to just kind of, and I felt like I, I remember stepping off the stage feeling like I haven't felt that much myself in a really long time especially in my message, right? Because my message feels so out there. It's so obscure, right? It's not really, if you think about it, but it it's not the conversations being had in the nutritional health and wellness community, right? But standing on the stage and telling it from the aspect of what I've experienced in my life and looking people eye to eye, it just came out. Um, and it was, it was a huge confidence building moment. And I was blessed to be able to even experience soul speaks 
before hand. Right. So I had worked with Lizanne and Paula and, yeah. and had that embodiment idea, but to put it all together with the wisdom of your story as a brand and your messaging, it was, it was very powerful. I think that's a really important point because it does take practice of getting up regular on a regular mm -hmm. basis. I mean, I think that's what, what, the original Soul Speaks is really built on is, is getting on up on regular every week for how many weeks? Yeah. Every every other week, like twice a month for three months or four months. Yeah. yeah. So you get that practice, right? Yeah. Um, so what questions do you have for Sherry? Um, there was something and it went right out of my head. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just want to comment on just like with, with Kristen, like to see you, you come alive and... Uh, you, you know, l letting that story come come through you, I don't know, it was so compelling, you know, and when we have to, when we make up, you know, we have to say it a certain way or whatever, it just, it, it's the plexiglass shield again. When that's yeah. taken down, um, the person and the story comes through and you you want both of those. It's like, I don't know what comes to mind is you, you're, you're juicy, you know, it's the whole <laughs> flavor thing that you do, but you come through that as well. Yeah, yeah. and it's, and I have like, over the last you know few years of entrepreneurship done other speak trainings and i've sat there and i've watched and i can feel it when i'm in those environments when they're like high five and people and they're doing all the things to try to keep people engaged and i'm so repelled by that like i'm so repelled by that stage of a speaker and that's not what this is this is so it's just it's just authentic it's and it's and you don't I think if this is part of the whole thing, like not believing in who you are and you think you have to go learn this technique to get people to engage. And it's so far from what you can really do at this level, the eye contact thing, the, the speaking your story, right? And then tying it all together. I mean, we, we weren't scripted. That's the other part about Soul Speaks, right? Like you're not scripted. You don't walk up here with a script. You just let it come out. And I love that. <laughs> I love that because I can't follow a script. You could put a prompter in front of me and I'd be like, I, I probably wouldn't even look at it. Yeah. You know, that's a really good point because yeah. uh, it's scary not to have a script sometimes, too, you know, but um, it 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 allows it to, to, to come to come through you versus from from your head and you build muscle and being trusting that that it'll come through and your intuition will come in as well. I remember we did a Soul Speak Slam, Lizanne and I, which used, you know, we used to do, and there was a whole group and people would come up randomly. Uh, and people that have never spoken in front of anybody in their lives were able to stand up after two hours in front of 70 people and speak. And um, I remember there was one woman that stood up and she, she was kind of like, well, this is so weird. Why, you know, it's like, why do we, should we have to practice being ourselves? <laughs> like, well, yeah, it shouldn't be that way. But because of all the stuff that gets put on us, like the stuff Cynthia was talking about, and, you know, we've been talking about, about what, what gets in your way and all the stupid messages that are not true and value judgments and all, all that kind of stuff. So we do have to practice being ourselves. And it is the anti-technique. There's mm -hmm. no technique to it. It's it's just simple and profound. Let go of any piece that's not you, and just then it opens the gate for you to come through, which is your juiciest thing. And it's interesting. I'm sitting here thinking, like, because a, that's a very vulnerable thing. Yeah. Right. To just take it all off. Right. I had that conversation with Laura in one of the breakouts. It's like it's really vulnerable to take all that stuff off of you that's been put on you for all these years, and. So what is it about Soul Speaks that creates that safe container? Because there is something that makes you feel safe on the stage to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's that connection that you have. And I think it's coming back home to you. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's like you're not, you're not putting on airs. That's back to that slide that I had. It's like we can be projecting. We can have a script of something that we are putting out into the world. Or we can truly drop into that fire and that light of who we are. And I think that's what we're tapping into. I mean, it was, it was part of the reason we liked, always liked each other's programs because we talked about the essence work, right? Yeah. Yeah. It all stand, started in the essence work. So I think, you know, all the work that you guys have done this morning leading up to this point, it's like, this is that light. This is that fire that you're taking out into the world and start to build your stories in a way that helps them start to 
just build your stories in a way that is just truly, I mean, you know your stories. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about it, right? I mean, this morning when I came up here and I told the story about the horse, right? It's like, I know that story with the deepest of my heart. I don't have to think about that. I don't, and it's the easiest way for me to drop into my body is to start talking about my horses, right? Um, so, you know, it's, that's, that's such a powerful thing. When we can find our truth in our stories, that's where we can start to do that. So really be thinking about what your stories are and what it is that you want to be, and you know, you're going to have hundreds of stories, right? And you might just start to keep a journal, like a list of all the different stories that you have and, and start to be curious about, okay, which ones really tie to what that core message is that you stand for? I remember that. I remember like the day before we stood up for our long, you know, opportunity on the stage being like, I have so many stories. I don't know which one yeah. to start with. Yeah. But then as you just start having that natural conversation, all of a sudden, oh yeah, that's where the story fits in. Right. That was another part for me that I loved about not having it scripted because as I'm talking and looking eye to eye with Donna Mazzatelli, you know, and just feeling her love back at me, I'm like, oh, and then something else pops in and it just turns into this yeah, just natural flow. Having those stories kind of like lined up, ready to go. They just show up right when they need to show up, Yeah, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love it because you're in, you're in the presence. So that's awesome. Thank you so much, Sherry. And thank, thank you, you, Kristen. So you, I'm going to, Kristen, we need to tell people your website, which I started to do, but, um, um, Sherry, what's your website and where people can people find you? Uh, flavorremedy.com. Okay. Yeah. And, and you're also on Facebook. And I'm on Facebook. I have a group, a uh, Facebook group called the salty, the sweet, the sour, and the savvy. Mm -hmm. um, you can join that group. And um, Instagram is also Flavor Remedy. 